Hey, this is Charisma82, and I'm here for some more Disneyland TNT tips and tricks. And the next ride we're going to be doing is the Indiana Jones ride, or also known as Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye at Disneyland. So, here's some little extra tidbits of info for you before I get into the main spiel about the ride. So, here you go. Disneyland started building Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye in August of 1993. It opened on March 3, 1995. The building is 57,000 square feet, and the track is 2,500 feet long. There are 17 vehicles in the ride, each EMVs, which stands for Enhanced Motion Vehicles. The ride lasts about three and a half minutes, and children must be over 46 inches tall to ride this ride. The reason George Lucas decided to team up with Disney to create this ride is because of the great success of Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, which can be found at Disney's MGM Studios in Disney World. There are three doors at the beginning of this ride that the car chooses from to go into. They are called the Fountain of Eternal Youth, the Chamber of Earthly Riches, and the Observatory of the Future. In reality, there is only one door. The room moves so as to fool riders into believing there are three doors, when in reality, riders will always go into the same exact door. Once inside the door, the second room changes appearance with colors and pictures, making the rider believe that they are in a different room each time. There are 14 rooms or sections in this ride. In the skeleton room of this ride, one of the skeletons sometimes wears a musketeer hat that has the name Bones written on it. After passing by the large snake in this ride, you pass by a wall of skulls. There are 1,995 skulls on this wall, representing the year the attraction opened. Sometimes, one of the skulls is wearing sunglasses. There are currently only two other rides in Disney parks that have the Indiana Jones theme. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril is found in Disneyland Resort Paris, and Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull is located at Tokyo Disney Sea. Temple of Peril is an intense roller coaster ride that opened in 1993, resembling the mining car chase in the second Indiana Jones movie called Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. In 2000, they reversed the roller coaster, so passengers went through the ride backwards. They changed it back to go forwards in 2004. Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Crystal Skull opened in 2001 at Tokyo Disney Sea. The ride is basically the same concept as the one in Disneyland. The only difference is, besides the different name, is the story that goes along with the ride. Most of their rooms are the same, with a few exceptions. This ride is in no way a remake of the Crystal Skull movie that came out in theaters. This ride came out first, has a different story to it than the movie, and it is coincidence that it has the same name. Okay, so now that you've got that information, let's get on to the actual ride. Now, I've already done the video on the line, so you should watch that video before you watch this part, because this is the actual ride getting on the little car thing that's going to take you around. First, before you actually start going through the ride, what you want to remember to do is when you sit down and buckle up, take anything that you have that's loose on you and put it in the little compartment thing in front of you. You do not want to lose your stuff. This ride is very jerky and stuff will fly out of the car. It's happened before. So even if you've got like a backpack, try your best to stuff that thing into the little net thing in front of you so it doesn't get lost. Hats, take them off. Don't risk losing your hats. Sunglasses, well, it's up to you. I am a cautious person. I would put them in the little compartment in front of me, but my sister, she wears them on the ride, and she hasn't lost hers yet, so it's up to you on that point. Um, now, also, before you actually sit down and get on the ride, you might want to know which side to get on. Now, if you get on the left side of the car, um, you're going to be next to skeletons that pop up at you while you're going through the ride. And if you're on the right side, there's this huge snake that's going to be right next to you. So it depends on which one you're more afraid of. Skeletons popping out at you or a huge snake that comes down at you. Also, if you're very scared of snakes, don't sit in the back seat. Request to sit in the middle or in the front because the back seat um, snake comes closest to you in the back seat. We had a friend once sat back seat in that last compartment. She freaked out. So if you're afraid of snakes, don't sit back there. Alright, so, um, oh, also, um, if you think it's cool that you're going to get to drive, if you get the driver's seat, 
the wheel doesn't move, so I'm sorry that might disappoint you. So now that you've got that information, I will go ahead and get on with the ride. Gonna go into your first room, and like I said before, there's only one room, but it looks like there's three, but there's only one. You're gonna go into the room, you're gonna go up, it's gonna say, oh, you looked into the eyes of the stone god thing, and you can look into its eyes or not, it's always gonna say that. You're gonna make a turn to the left, and you're gonna go down this dark hall, where it looks like electricity's going all over the place. And then you're going to run into Indiana Jones. It's not the real guy. Too bad, huh? But it is an electronic guy that looks just like him who tells you to go deeper into the temple. You go deeper into the temple and then you hear the theme music for Indiana Jones and then you're there and you see the whole layout of the temple. And when you do this, there used to be this huge fire thing that would come up around you. Some idiot, probably it scared him and so now they don't have the fire thing because Disney people took it out because people got scared. Anyway, you're going to go first into the skeleton room and like I said, skeletons will pop up on you on the left side. Next after that room is the bug room. Yes, little bug things will be crawling all over the walls. They will not get on you. Now there might be somebody sitting next to you to pretend like there's bugs on you like it's happened before to me, but don't worry, no bugs in the car. After the bugs, there, um, you'll go on to a, the bridge, the main bridge, fire around you, used to be a lot of fire, now there's just like a puff of smoke or something. Then you're going to turn around and you're going to see a big snake and you think, oh no, we're going to go past it, and you're right. You go past this huge snake, the car kind of stalls a little bit, the thing lunges at the car, that's why if you're in the back seat, you'll get closest to it because it lunges at the car. You take off, you're going to go down a little thing and down by some hot lava. It doesn't look like hot lava, but it's supposed to be. And then you're going to go into this cave. Now it's going to be all dark and stuff. You're going to see like some fake thing up in the air with pretend rats on it. It's very fake looking and stupid, but they put it in there. You're going to keep going. The car is going to stop and stall. Complete darkness. And it's kind of freaky, but don't worry. The car will soon start again. Um keep going and finally you see light again and then there's these things on the sides of this wall, these skeleton painted on the walls and puffs of air are going to blow at you like they're blowing darts out at you. So nothing to worry there unless you're allergic to wind which would be stupid. Anyway, so you turn into your last final room and here is Indiana Jones hanging up in the air on this cord thing supposed to be rope I guess and all he's telling you go back go back and then all of a sudden you see this big boulder and it's coming at you when reality the room is actually moving and the car isn't and the room the things actually coming it, it, it's hard to explain but yeah the car is actually going towards it making it look like it's coming at you and a big thing anyway you go under it and you make a sharp turn and you see Indiana Jones again um, looks like he just defeated this big ball thing that was going to come at you. He tells you to be more careful. He's got a couple different lines he'll say. I don't have them memorized. And then the ride's over. And then you get to get off the ride. So it was hopefully a good experience for you when you get on it. Um, hopefully I just let you know all the rooms that will be in there. So if one of those things really freaks you out, then don't go on it. If one of those freaks your kids out and you want them to go on it, don't tell them about it. So there's all that. Um, not much more, except when you get off the ride, you're going to have to walk a little ways to get out because the line was long. you got to walk back through some of that stuff to get out of the actual ride. Oh, and one last thing. AT&T used to um, support, promote this ride and help pay for it or whatever. And they used to have a sign up at the top when you're about to leave the last exit of the place to get out of the ride permanently or whatever. It used to say, for those who choose wisely, they choose AT&T. And we always thought that was a cool joke because, you know, in the last Indiana Jones movie, he um, takes the drink of the thing and the guy says, oh, he cho chose wisely. So I always liked that little joke, but I think they've since taken it down, which is kind of sad because AT&T doesn't sponsor the place anymore. So. There you go, and make sure to look out for more Disneyland TNT tips and tricks in the future. Um, so, goodbye.